Okay, so we're starting off in Cimitero, Cimitero, Central, Blue Napa Call. Okay, we're starting off in Romania. That's where we're starting off at. <laughs> That's why. Okay, Dr. Leviticus. Are these supposed to be somebody? This guy kind of reminds me of Blockbuster. Um, he looks just like Blockbuster. <laughs> you know? Look at that. Look at the face. I'm just saying. I got intrigued at first to see what they're up to. I love this, the myth here about the, you know, crossing the river Styx and the paying the, according to the boatman, you know, Karen. Yeah, it is. They are doing some shade shit, though. These missions, though, that these owls send them on seem so arbitrary. Nick's actually globe trotting a lot nowadays, even though he made that comment about, you know, itchy feet. All over the globe, though. Now we're in Italy. And a circus, no doubt. This is, the circus, this circus, though, looks really fun. Gotta say it. <laughs> I noticed that his thoughts come out a lot more in these thought boxes. He seems to think a lot more deeper to us. This cobra though, it would actually be really cool if it was a real cobra. I'm just saying this. I know it's probably just a costume. You can see the little line and stuff, but it would be a lot cooler if it was an actual cobra. <laughs> just saying. I had a hard time figuring out what these moves were that uh, he was doing in this in this fight here. I don't know what what's kind of with that like this. Like, okay, he jumps into this this window, right? And he grabs, or he lands on this windowsill and he grabs it, but then he, he, does he kick out or does he spin around with the kick? It's not really an important thing, but I'm having, I have trouble imagining what's going on here. <laughs> Representative Manifred. And there's that net reference again. The one that they love to use so much. It's kind of funny how they go through all this trouble. And the owls, I mean, just, you know, kind of lean forward a little bit and whisper, the Parliament of Owls sends his regards. Like, <laughs> like creeper status style. And just kind of flip out. Like, what just happened? <laughs> and we're traveling again. Now we're in Crete. It kind of irritates me though because I was excited to learn when he was going to be working for the owls, right? And everybody's like, oh my god, he can't be a bad guy. But it was a kind of exciting that he was going to be forced to do something darker. But these boxes of narr narration, they irritate me because they constantly remind us that he's not really doing it. That he's, you know, just faking it so that whatever he does, you don't have to take seriously and it will be excused because he already explained in a narration that he's not really a bad guy. That, uh, well, it's irritating because I want to see what happens when they're pushed to do something like this. But to be constantly reminded that it's not real, that takes away the danger of it. There's just because you know he's not really going to do anything bad. There's no excitement to guess, you know, will he or will he not? Because you know he already told you that he's not gonna no matter what. So that takes away the danger of it. And that's what I got excited about when I heard that he was going to be working for the owls. That maybe, you know, you would have to explore a darker potential but no being very stubborn in the fact that he's just going to be in the middle of them but he's not going to play with them also the owls have their pad updated it's looking pretty nice i gotta say it took me a few times to reread it that this mist when he opens the door and right here around his feet you could tell that it's cold all over the place so it kind of looks like glass but it's ice you know so so the owls so the owls crib is built around ice surround you know built in ice and I wonder what's up with that since we know that the talent's like biggest weakness famously is ice and the cold in general and so the owls build their base around it or is that the way for the owls to control the talents maybe that's what I'm wondering because it can't be coincidence that it's ice and the talent's weakness is ice right so they're trying to control the talents this way by building their place in the ice they can keep them asleep until they need them that's what I'm thinking right so it's really interesting to know that they paid attention enough to make it ice. I don't know how I feel about the black masks instead of the white because the owl, the white has more resemblance to the owl that everybody knows. To an owl, you know, a real owl. It's black. You think Dick would have mentioned something about it, you know, like, but whatever. I'm also really curious as to who's behind the mask. It was revealed in the rebirth. I don't remember. I know, I do know that he replaced the other guy and I'm curious to know more about this guy because so far all he's done is take his place and shades the color of his mask <laughs> is that your big evil plot i don't know i don't really want to go back and read so the fact that this guy took it over how does that affect dick you're saying because he's going to make the owls more evil than they are and he's sending dick on these missions to you know get his plans done or whatever 
but does that mean former leader before him would have sent him on missions that aren't so evil? Like, is it more evil than the other owls? Like, why is this, why did this guy, why is this guy replacing him really such a big deal yet? Because they haven't said anything about it since he was replaced. <laughs> Yeah, see, he took over the parliament. He acted like there was going to be some big changes and stuff. All he did was take his place and put on a different mask, and that's it. So what happened to his very evil plan? That's what I want to know. Let's see, he brings up Raptor. And then he says, you will steal and you will kill for us. See, that should get us excited to see that Nightwing is going to be doing this bad stuff. I mean, it sounds bad the way I say it, but you know what I mean, right? But it turns out that no, he's not. He's not really going to do it. He's going to find some way around it. And he's gonna fake it. So what's the point of even saying it if we can't get excited about it? You know what I mean? Maybe that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just like sadistic and like to see the characters go through drama and stuff. Because <laughs> everyone else, when they read this stuff, they like to see their characters, you know, stick to their guns and overcome the challenges and stuff. Like you know them to be good and they want to, you want to see them prove how good they are. I don't know. Kind of, isn't that kind of boring to always know they're going to do the right thing? kind of like who's like super newbie who's that super boy scout i don't want to say that's not like i don't when i say boy scout i thought it's superman but i don't want to say you know that's like superman doing something bad because obviously he's kind of naive he's not the sharpest tool in the shed you know but he could be tricked into doing something bad aka bbs but i'm um, talking about somebody whose morals are so good all the time that you can't even play a trick on them because they're so goody <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be like dogging on the good people. When you get somebody like, um, who is it? Who is so, someone so good all the time that they're literally no fun, like, at it? Like, there would be no fun at a party or something. <laughs> Like Captain America, okay? Let's say like Captain America. You know, no matter what, Captain America is never going to do something bad. He's never going to go against his morals and all that. It's the same thing with this book right here. You know that Dick Grayson is so good that they're saying all this stuff like, oh, well now he's going to be a bad guy. Yeah, he's going to work and he's going to he's going to kill and he's going to steal as part of the owls, which would be awesomely cool to see suddenly him switch like that. Yeah, he, they keep reminding us, oh, but he's such a good guy. He's not really going to do it, okay? We're just going to be like, you know, what if, you know, like an alternate reality. <laughs> it's kind of like what they're doing now. I'm just saying, it's kind of annoying that they keep reminding us that he's such a good guy that this isn't possible for him to do. When we've seen him do some pretty bad stuff, by the way, and we're back to Gotham City and he's gonna have to glow trot again like right after this quick visit so he wanted to borrow one of Bruce's private jets am I right first class <laughs> also notice here that the Joker card has changed is that is that just me or does it look that way it looks like Suicide Squad's joke just saying like I just noticed it but I don't know how I feel about that <laughs> I don't know if that was on purpose or if I just noticed that next accident. why is Robin and Batman fighting in their costumes by the way this is like private underground you think when they're down here in the cave that no one else can get in and stuff, they don't need to be duped out, you know, after a quick spar between dinner and dessert <laughs> for one little quick training session. That made me laugh. Telling Damien we're hit Batman. That's pretty funny. Douche move. Bruce is so grumpy though. But I mean, that's what we love about him, right? Okay, also this cheese viking thing. This game that Damien got all excited for. I wonder about this suddenly because he's running around acting like a normal kid. This is Damien, okay? This is... Damien the demon spawn. Where did Damien go and who is he replaced with? <laughs> okay, because no, no, no. In the Rebirth one right before this, they went to the arcade and Damien mentioned that Bruce doesn't let him play video games or that was it, doesn't like him doing it or whatever. Like he doesn't, he, so this arcade was a special trip. And now he's excited to get to go play a video game, which means he must have it in his room if it's a five minute break. Okay, but first of all, that is not enough to play anything. I need at least like five hours. <laughs> Anyway, do you think Bruce would approve of video games because it raises hand-eye coordination and stuff? Just saying, you know, maybe they should use that argument. Bruce's response right here to Nightwing, you know, innocent, out loud, curious about it. Batman is his mentor. You think if Dick's coming to him with a problem after all the times that he intentionally turned away from him when he had one, you think Bruce would be willing to jump on that to help him just to say that he helped him, you know? <laughs> the action here for when Dick is actually handed him feeding him information about the owls and stuff and he did this in order to save Damien his son in the first place you think he would be a little bit more responsive to the situation he's telling him exactly who the owls want him to meet what he want what they want him to do and Bruce's response though it's you know what are you telling me for first of all rude <laughs> second of all what the Bruce 
Like, he came all the way from Greece to make you think. You think the owls would have enough tabs on Dick to, as much as he globe trots? And the fact that he, you know, he is hand to hand with Batman. You think that he would have, they would have tabs on Dick in order so that he wouldn't tell Batman their plans. Like, they just assumed that he wouldn't care? Because obviously he would run back to Batman if he could, you know? I don't know, am I thinking too far into this? Because I feel like I am. He acts like they did something to him, or he did something to him. Like, he says, you know, I'm happy to pay for your flights and your gear and stuff, but I don't want to help you. It's just a really weird, being really immature about it right now. I'm not your teacher anymore, Dick. See the way it says your teacher? I'm not your teacher anymore, Dick. He says it like, I'm teaching Damien now, so you go do your own thing. That was kind of a douche thing to say. I also don't really care for how they're uh, trying to squeeze in this Dick and Barbara thing again. We already went through I love Babs, but I want to see fighting and I want to see some, uh, you know, I want to see more action and cool plans. Even though this did make me laugh. I'm not going to lie. I laugh out loud when he dressed up. <laughs> oh, Babs. And then he slips right here when he says he's talking to her and he makes this slip. Makes a slip about it. It's okay. Yeah, we're cool. I just wanted to see you before I go play spy. And she's like, what? Play spy? I thought that was over with it. And he's like, oh crap. It is. It, uh, was. Seriously? You make that kind of slip? How do you not make that slip on purpose? <laughs> why would you, why would you make that kind of slip if not on purpose? I, just what? And we're back in Russia doing the creeper, creeper thing. So let me get this straight, right? You go to Greece. They sent you to Russia. You go to Gotham to say goodbye. Get rejected. So you fly to Russia. All the way, take a private plane. You get get all the stuff you go through the hours just to scare this guy by saying this one by saying this one line about the owl sitting in their regards like what that's all you came to do is scare this guy a little bit send an email send a text or something they know that the owls exist just get someone over there who's already stationed in russia i don't understand why they physically had to send him to Russia to scare this guy. Other than, I mean, of course, to meet Raptor, who probably also came there. It doesn't really make sense at all, you know? Like, they act like he's the only person working for them. <laughs> when you know they have parliaments all around the globe, you have to have some in Russia. Just get someone else to do it. Also, I still love these colors, by the way. I just can't help but notice how nice they are. The, the lighting and the color, every time I turn the page, it's so bright. I mean, not bright, but it's, it's um, exuberant. He also mentions that they're, you know, circus term, but he never mentions what the circus term is. <laughs> like, does he mean itchy feet? Because that's a popular term. It's not just the circus term. Anyway, it was cute that he was sitting there in the park working on this doll. Um, it, again, it just seems kind of weird that he wouldn't pay attention to somebody walking up. I don't know. I mean, unless Raptor was purposely sneaking up on him like that. Kind of, they're making, making Dick look kind of dumb. <laughs> The shit talking is really on point though. I did laugh at some of these exchanges. They told him that he was gonna have to work with Raptor, right? I mean, he was just like, oh, I don't like it, but I'll do it. And now he just, he says no thanks and tries to ro run off like he's gonna have an option. What does he think? Like he's just gonna let him go and they're just gonna say nothing about it? No, they told him he has to do it. So he can't really, it's not really a choice, bro. <laughs> He's gonna, he's gonna get his ass kicked again. This guy, he can't be that good, right? I don't want to dare say bad, better than Batman because that's kind of the, the arc they're trying to prove here, right? I was gonna say it on accident, but it's it's true, isn't it? He can't be better than Batman. The only person who could really beat Nightwing in a fight like that, randomly like this, would be Batman. <laughs> I mean, would be Batman. And this guy is not Batman. Maybe I'm just like super biased. He's gonna have a lot of lot to prove to me. I guess the point is that he, he tries to make him angry enough by, you know, shit talking. To make him lose his focus and lose his concentration in order to get the upper hand. But again, that's what Dick does when he fights. So you think he would be very knowledgeable about, about this tactic. He's not supposed to be so impulsive enough that he would actually fall for that. But this is almost, what, twice, three times in a series of a couple issues that he just attacks somebody when they upset him? Who would do that? Who normally does that? He doesn't usually do that. He's usually the, you know, the tactical one. The one that stays cool and calm when they get this. They usually, he usually is not gonna freak out and attack somebody when they say, oh, well, you're a chicken, you know? <laughs> the colors though, so nice. The red and the blue and the purple. Yes, I like re-education. We don't need no education. And my favorite panel, is hands down this one right here hands down i mean it's so pretty i could literally just like stare at this picture all the time the colors are so nice and everything this 
it was so nice to look at the whole time but anyway i hope they stop being afraid to push limits because we finally got nightwing back and they're not unleashing him <laughs> they're doing this weird stuff i don't know what they're doing or where it's going but it's, it's i'm curious to find out but i am enjoying it anyway i don't like people who just bitch about who bitch about you know the comics and stuff for no real reason but this is my favorite character, so I'm gonna enjoy it no matter what. I hope you also enjoy it.